and the body. El Harth, uh, Surah El Megara, Ayah 223, your wives are as a tilth unto you. This Arabic term refers to the plowing of the earth and the sowing of the seed in it. This term is used in reference to sexual intercourse, plowing, and implantation of the blastocyst, sowing of the seed. This analogy is a very good one since the blastocyst develops root-like structures called chorionic villi, which derive oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood, just as the roots of the plant, shown here, uh, derive their nutrients from the soil. Next uh, is Alaka. Let's have the next slide. Uh, Alaka is uh, Sura al Uminim Ayah 14. Then we created the drop into a leech like structure. Then, of that leech like structure, we made a chewed like substance. Uh, Alaka refers to a leech like appearance, especially at about 22 days, as shown in this slide. This is a leech. And this is the human embryo, but 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing, and that it is truly, the human embryo is truly leech-like. The leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac, which is embedded in the maternal blood, and attached to the maternal endometrium, or the lining of the uterus. This is uh, the Mudga stage, Surah al Muminim, Ayah 1 to 14. And I repeated that before. Then we created the drop into a leech like structure. Then, of that leech like structure, we made a chewed like substance, which you can see here, and begins during the sixth week. Next uh, stage is uh, Al Kissa, Bill Lan. Surah al Mu Minim Ayah 14. Then we clothe the bones with flesh. So in the previous stage, then we had the bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. So this Arabic term means a clothing uh, with flesh, and after the bones form, they become surrounded or clothed by flesh or muscles, which acquire attachments to them. These muscle attachments permit movements of the skeleton to occur. Now this is the final stage of development called El Nasha. Uh, then we developed of him another creation. Uh, El Nasha means uh, growth or coming into being. This undoubtedly refers to the fetal period when there is growth and differentiation of the embryo that developed in the embryonic period. The rate of body growth during the fetal period is remarkable, especially between the ninth and 16th weeks. You notice how quickly it's growing in this uh, nasha stage or uh, fetal period as we call it. The next uh, stage is El Kablia. This sort of says that the duration of pregnancy and separation is 30 months. This uh, Arabic term refers to the viability or ability of the human fetus to survive outside the uterus. There is no definite time when survival of the fetus is assured, but it is generally accepted now that a fetus that is 24 weeks or older has a reasonable chance of survival. Survival of fetuses 22 to 24 weeks old has only been become possible in the last few years uh, when better methods of providing care for premature infants uh, were developed. So uh, the period uh, viable embryo or fetus would be here at 24 weeks. We used to say 26, 28, but now with better incubation, uh, some babies at 24 weeks can survive, and we've even had some at 22 weeks, but this takes highly sophisticated incubation uh, to do that. So this uh, period then is the uh, period of uh, viability or the ability of the human fetus to survive. The next stage is the El Adana. Al Rahimia. This uh, stage refers to the final stages of fetal development in the uterus when the fetus could survive if born prematurely, but it remains in the uterus where it is supported or nourished by the mother. 
In most cases, therefore, the uterus acts as an incubator for the premature infant. Weight gain during these final weeks is phenomenal as the fetus accumulates fat and is gradually prepared for birth. This last uh, ayah is Surah Abasa, ayat 19 and 20. From a drop he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term uh, means to make the passage easy. It is well known that as the time of birth approaches, the maternal tissues of the cervix and the joints of the pelvis become looser so that the passage of the fetus through the fetal canal will be facilitated. This process, initiated by hormones in the mother's blood, accelerates during the early stages of labor or delivery of the baby. As the amniochorionic sac, that is the bag of waters surrounding the baby, expands near the time of birth, it protrudes into the cervix, that is the neck of the uterus, and causes it to dilate. When the amniochorionic sac ruptures, the amniotic fluid provides a slippery pathway for the fetus to pass along the cervix and vagina to the outside of its mother. All the above occurrences facilitate the birth of the baby, that is, they make the passage easy. The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. Thank you very much. The Quran on Embryology Dr. E. Marshall Johnson Dr. E. Marshall Johnson is Professor Emeritus of Anatomy and Developmental Biology at Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. There, for 20 years, he was Professor of Anatomy, the Chairman of the Department of Anatomy, and the Director of the Daniel Bow Institute. He was also the President of the Teratology Society. He has authored more than 200 publications. As you follow Dr. Marshall on this incredibly detailed journey, he leaves you in no doubt as to the only possible conclusion that can be made. The two statements uh, that I have are that, number one, Allah knows what every female womb bears and what is penetrating into the womb or decreasing and what is increasing. The second, is none knows the future of what is decreasing or penetrating into the wombs except Allah. The two statements taken together can be considered the period of early embryogenesis from insemination to early implantation of the fertilized ovum. The key word in both is al gaid which could mean passing through or penetration of fluid into depth, like water going into the depth of the earth. And two, decrease in amount. The two statements refer to something which is passing through the female reproductive tract, which is decreasing and or increasing in size, and it is something whose future at this stage is known to no one except Allah. This something, evidently, is a reference to the male and female generative materials and later to the zygote. When different meanings of the key word al guide are applied to the ayah and the hadith, these evidently point to the developmental processes taking place up to the stage of early implantation. It is science, could I have the next slide please? 